We all knew that we could expect a giant robot action extravaganza in Transformers Rise of the Beast, but the ending may have been more than meets the eye. Let's go ahead and dive right into it, and spoilers ahead, obviously. So by the end of the film, the Autobots, Animax, and Humanity managed to unite and defeat the Terracons, but they actually only repelled their master, Unicron. With Earth as the prime target for galactic threats, it's only natural that the government would step in to hire on anyone who fought alongside our gigantic robotic defenders. Although I don't think that anyone was expecting G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe! With every major company still wanting some of that cinematic universe money, it's only natural that Hasbro would try something like this after Bumblebee was a success. At this point, it's pretty unclear as to what this means. A likely direction for this to go is that we'll be seeing a few G.I. Joe cameos in future Transformers movies, slowly building up a roster that can be later fleshed out in a proper G.I. Joe film. Now, we have had two G.I. Joe movies in the past. The 2021 Snake Eyes origin movie was completely disconnected from that last series, although that wasn't exactly apparent at the time. Despite that movie's less than stellar reception, the integration of G.I. Joe into the Transformers movie universe is the perfect way to reintroduce that character in a future movie. Since Snake Eyes works for the government, he could show up in the next movie to fight alongside Noah. But if you're bringing G.I. Joe into the mix, Cobra won't be far behind. While there wasn't any mention of them in Rise of the Beast, the movie left a status quo that they could take advantage of. The activation of the Transwarp teleporter sent a shockwave across the globe, highlighting the veins of rich Energon that Unicron was planning to consume. Energon is basically super gasoline, which would be a prime resource that Cobra would want to get their hands on. Or maybe we'll get other organizations like Venom or Mask thrown into the mix, since people not in the know might think that it's just a ripoff of Hydra. The Hasbro Cinematic Universe isn't stopping at G.I. Joe, though. Or at least it really shouldn't. Hasbro's had other properties that have crossed over with G.I. Joe and the Transformers before, starting with the Micronauts. The Micronauts actually started as a Marvel comic starring explorers of the Microverse, which MCU fans would better know as the Quantum Realm. They tangled with the likes of Hydra and the Demon Nightmare, and even Doctor Doom. Hasbro got the film rights back since they produced the original toy line, and a movie had been in the works up until it was scrapped in 2020. In due time, the Micronauts could easily make a comeback. They had an 11-issue comic run at IDW, and even featured as main characters in the crossover event, Revolution. That storyline saw the Autobots team up with G.I. Joe, the Micronauts, and even Rom the Space Knight. So there's definitely some possible routes that they could go. It was in Revolution that the IDW comics first depicted Micronus Prime, one of 13 Primes who had ties to the first Cybertron Civil War, and who was the fifth Prime created to battle Unicron. He oversaw the creation of a new Transformer civilization after fleeing Cybertron, and would eventually create the Microverse where we would meet the titular Micronauts. While the movie didn't go into the lore of the other Primes or the Knights of Cybertron, Setting up Unicron as the Thanos of the HCU opens the door to introduce Micronus in a number of ways. You could have the Micronauts be a G.I. Joe subdivision that explores the Microverse and eventually meet Micronus himself. You'd just be ripping off the latest Ant-Man movie, but as long as you manage to be better than Quantumania, I don't think anyone's gonna mind. But the Transformers aren't the only alien robots that could get involved. Rom the Space Knight is an underrated character that hasn't gotten much exposure, despite the fact that his comic origins were heavily tied to Marvel's cosmic universe. Look at that, more connections to Marvel. That's always fun. James Gunn actually wanted to include Rom in his Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but unfortunately the film rights to Rom and his arch enemies, the Dire Wraiths, are with Hasbro. But that's actually kind of fortunate, since it means we could see Rom meet Optimus Prime on the big screen. And who doesn't want that? Probably you, because you probably didn't know who Rom was before this video. If you did, then you're right there with me and wanting to see it. And that might actually happen. Remember when I mentioned Revolution? The Hasbro Comics universe built up to that event shortly following Rom's debut at IDW in 2016. The plot of that story saw the world becoming distrustful of the Autobots after Optimus Prime annexed Earth into the Cybertronian Council of Worlds. G.I. Joe planned to make a move on the Autobots as their intervention wasn't exactly doing it for political tensions. This was all disrupted by a secret invasion of Rom's enemies, the Dire Wraiths. They're shape-shifting alien space wizards that basically pull a secret invasion in this storyline, only with more giant robots and slightly less Samuel L. Jackson. Whether that's a pro or a con is completely up to you. 
We have to assume that there's no one we can trust. And the secret hangar bay did feature some kind of alien ship that could have been Cybertronian. So the filmmakers are certainly looking ahead there. Building up to anything resembling revolution is gonna take a long time if they want the payoff to be satisfying though. But the introduction of G.I. Joe, the present threat of Unicron, and the revelation that Earth is just rich with Energon has certainly set the groundwork for a rich world that could potentially rival that of DC and Marvel. If you want to get really wild and wacky, you know what other properties Hasbro owns? Well, for starters, they own the Power Rangers, and they've been talking about rebooting that series for a while, so it wouldn't be that hard to just explain that Grid Energy and Energon are basically the same thing. Could you imagine seeing the Megazord deck it out with some Decepticons? That is definitely something I want to see. And if anyone's still worried that this might not pan out, at least Mirage managed to make it out of this alive. Since Noah is a part of G.I. Joe, maybe he'll have him tag along and build him some new robot suits. He could be the Iron Man of the HCU. Because we need that, apparently. Here's the thing, though. So far in this video, I've been talking about how they could do a Hasbro cinematic universe and what it could be building towards. But maybe the thing we should be discussing is if there should even be a Hasbro cinematic universe in the first place. Of all the previous franchises that tried to go the way of Marvel and build things up like that, pretty much all of them failed. Do you remember the Dark Universe? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. Since it managed to release only one movie before it became completely defunct. And you might never have found it otherwise. Again, you're welcome. That was the universe that Universal planned on building up around their classic movie monsters. You know, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, the Invisible Man, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, all of those guys. On its face, it wasn't a bad idea. I mean, when you think about it, the Universal monsters kind of already were the original cinematic universe, as all of their old movies crossed over and referenced each other already. So the potential was certainly there, and I for one was actually personally kind of excited about the prospect. And then they released The Mummy, and the whole thing just completely died, leaving us with nothing but shattered hopes, broken dreams, and one of the most hilariously ill-planned promotional photos of all time, showing us the main cast of the universe, 75% of which never got a movie to appear in at all. That will never not be funny to me in kind of a sad way. The point is, it's not so easy to just make a franchise into a cinematic universe, but it is extremely easy to fail at it. Heck, even the second largest cinematic universe, the DC universe, is not exactly in a great spot. Sure, there were a couple of good films tied to it, but it had such a rocky go over the last decade that now James Gunn has been brought in to effectively reboot the whole thing. It's really hard to touch what Marvel's done. If even their biggest competitor couldn't do it, who's to say that the movie about transforming robots is going to be able to? Now, Transformers films do fairly well at the box office and certainly have their fans. I mean, come on, this is like, what, the seventh live action movie in the franchise? It has a strong foundation, so using it to build out a stronger overall brand might not be the worst idea. However, are fans of Transformers going to care enough to actually go see G.I. Joe? Maybe, but what about the other possible crossovers that I mentioned? Rom? Micronauts? Who's going to go see those beside niche fans who are already invested? Uh, sure, they could pull a Guardians of the Galaxy, give us a bunch of niche characters in a package that is just so good that everybody watches it. And maybe the fan base is more rabid than I think it is. Maybe this is a spectacular idea and it's going to give us years of awesome, action-filled movies that everyone can enjoy. I legitimately hope so, but consider me a wee bit of a skeptic. I mean, can you blame me? The last thing I want is another dark universe. That's not gonna happen, right? Right! Let's win this! And with that, we roll out. What did you think of the movie? Was it more than meets the eye or was it another colossal disappointment? What G.I. Joe characters do you want to see appear in future movies? Let us know in the comments below.